Um, I have a question about um, a class action lawsuit um, that was uh, brought forward by Thomas Summers regarding overtime pay. And I'm wondering how you think this might affect um, the state. I don't know what it might cost um, and uh, you know, where we are with that particular suit. Well, I can't tell you, so we can't. Right, there we go. <laughs> That's my case. <laughs> uh, as you know, I think what um, she's for Aaron's referring to is the uh, Fair Labor Standards Act litigation. It's a class action lawsuit uh, that's been brought. Uh, I believe the, uh, I'm not entirely familiar with the claims, but my understanding is that there is a claim that by um, paying overtime at a certain rate, depending on a particular pay grade, uh, that we, the state, are violating the Fair Labor Standards Act. Um, I, our general counsel has looked at that. Um, we are defending that litigation vigorously. Um, it's, you know, I, I think they're, we're comfortable that you know, the decision has been made appropriately, that we are not making uh, decisions based across a class, but on an individualized basis, which is what is required uh, by the Fair Labor Standards Act. Um, with respect to what the potential is for damages, I am not familiar with that at this point. Um, I would have to know a little bit more about what the statute of limitations would apply and how far back they would go. But there could be, if a court were to find a violation, there would be money damages involved. And I, I can't tell you what that is at this point. So I'm happy to find that for you. I understand the, um, judiciary, the, the judicial branch, however, did decide to go ahead and um, acknowledge that some employees um, did deserve overtime pay. I'm Would you care to comment on that? that? I know okay. that we filed a motion to dismiss, mm -hmm. um, and a motion to dismiss is a very high standard for, um, in terms of whether or not a court will dismiss a claim. Uh, and I, I know we're going forward uh, that the court said we want to hear more about it, but uh, to my knowledge, there has not been a finding that any particular plaintiff is entitled to overtime or that there's been any violation. Certainly, there's been no assertion uh, that there's been a widespread violation throughout state government. Great, thank you. You mentioned the, uh, the tax, uh, Blue Ribbon Tax Commission. Do you, can you say now where you might be leaning in terms of uh, where they're heading? Uh, <coughs> changing the income tax structure, going to a, a more general sales tax? I mean, can you, can you offer any clues about where you might be leaning towards? No, I can't, John, and I'll tell you, uh, when I appointed Kathy Hoyt to the commission, and I know the speaker made the same commitment as did the governor, we agreed that we weren't going to comment on the various recommendations they'd be making piecemeal, uh, because we thought we could only do damage to the cause. And you know, the mission's an important one. We have a patchwork, quilt of taxes that have been glued together for various individual reasons over the years without a comprehensive plan. And what we've asked them to do is come back to us with a plan uh, that ensures that Vermont's as competitive as we can be with our neighboring states, that we grow wealth and we grow jobs, and that we have a tax system that reflects the technology of the 21st century. Sales tax is a great example. You can push a button and shop online uh, as easily as you can walk to the downtown store. So we know that our downtown merchants are frankly being discriminated against in terms of tax structure against those who are purchasing on the web. There's one challenge, income tax. We know that Vermont rates look high. The question is, does that serve us well? Uh, so I think they're on track. They're doing good work. They're going to do it in two pieces. Uh, and uh, we're not going to comment on their work until it's been released. Do you have concerns, though, about um whether or not the recommendations are presented in unanimous fashion. If there's a split, are you going to be disappointed? Well, you know, you always, everyone, including all three members of the commission, would love to have a unanimous recommendation. But I'm more interested in ideas uh, than I am with whether or not the report is unanimous. And frankly, I'll look at both the minority and the majority recommendations if that's how it comes in fact, that's how it comes down. But in the end, uh, let's get new ideas. Let's look at them in an open-minded fashion. We have a tax commissioner who's going to get into being open-minded about this process, and let's see what we can get done. Um, is it something that you think can get done in the first half of the biennium, or is an overhaul of the scope that they're likely to uh, propose something that would take two years? I don't know yet. 
uh, I, know, I can guarantee you it'll be two years in respect. They've already said that they're going to be really coming back with the big property tax challenges in a second year because they just don't have time enough to make recommendations on our entire tax structure. Uh, so <coughs> no question it'll be a two-year effort. Uh, the question is how much can we get done in the first biennium and we'll see what they come out with. Um, you, you have not issued a no new taxes pledge, correct? Well, no, I would never take a pledge like that. But I have made really clear that, you know, I, I guess I don't share the view of some of my Democratic friends that Vermont's biggest challenge is that our taxes are not high enough. I think our taxes are too high. And as a business person, I understand the relationship between tax policy and the ability to grow jobs. So since we're running for two years here, all engines on creating jobs, you can bet that I don't think the solution to job creation is raising taxes. When it comes time to make that difficult choice to decide whether or not to raise taxes, what are the criteria that you'll use to, to decide whether that is appropriate? Well, um, the Secretary of Administration is working with the team now to try to come up with a budget. Uh, and, you know, we're in a really tough challenge. 110, 112 million dollars at a time where we've spent two years trimming. We all know that it's going to be tough. But what I have said is, I'm willing to make, I understand that we're all going to make some really tough choices short term in order to make the infrastructure changes that will grow jobs and grow economic opportunities long term. And we're all going to have to have a pretty tough gut and be patient. What do you think about the action in Washington right now to uh, roll back all the prevent those tax hikes from taking effect, or the restoration of the tax rates from taking effect on all income classes? Well, from a policy perspective, it's a lost opportunity. Uh, there's no question that uh, the wealthiest Vermonters and the wealthiest Americans uh, got a huge income tax cut. Those are making a million dollars or more uh, when George Bush became president. And I thought that the Clinton tax rates made a lot more sense for America. We have a country that's in deficit that's funding money hand over fist. And the notion that we would, uh, at this time in our economic recovery, uh, say to those who make one, two, three, four, ten million dollars, we don't think you should contribute a little more to the cause, uh, seems to me to be irrational. However, I understand the political reality that President Obama is facing. He has a Republican House, and he's got to work with what he has. Um, can you speak for a second to last Friday late in the afternoon, we got a release from the health department based on something that they had heard uh, midweek or earlier in the week from Antergy regarding the tritium in, in there uh, in the groundwater. <coughs> and uh, they suspended, if not ceased, their withdrawal uh, using pumps to draw out that water. What do you think of that action? Well, I think it's... Uh it's a, I think it's a, I think that action is a huge mistake for Vermont. And I've made that clear. I immediately picked up the phone and spoke with uh, Mr. Cohn, who's uh, managing the plant now. Uh, I've had conversations with the chairman of the uh, Nuclear Regulatory Commission. Uh, and uh, I've made my concern very clear. Uh, I believe that they should not only turn pumps back on immediately, but that we should add four additional pumps. I said that back in mid-October, and I don't believe it with any less conviction today. But here's the challenge. Uh, we have a really serious leak that took place at Mount Yankee. What makes our leak different from some of the other states that have leaks is that most of the other states have only dealt with tritium. Uh, we're dealing with strontium, cobalt, and other highly radioactive nuclear substances that cause cancer in people. And uh, it's a very serious challenge. As much of those radioactive substances as we can pump out of the ground to prevent them from getting into the aquifer or burning and into the Connecticut River uh, is in Vermont's, New Hampshire's, Massachusetts's, and New England's best interest. So I've made clear that I think it's penny wise and pound foolish. I'm very concerned about it. I wish they'd turn the pumps back on. If I were governor right now, uh, I would be insisting that they turn the pumps back on. So are you calling on the current administration to insist that? Well, you know, I've made my position clear. And the administration, we only have one governor at a time, thankfully. Uh, and uh, 
they'll have to make the judgments they make. But as of January 6, I cannot make myself more clear. We should be doing more pumping, more pumping, not less pumping. And you know, it just you know, I'm not a geologist and I'm not a nuclear engineer, but it defies logic that you would have highly radioactive materials in the ground. You have an opportunity to pump them out and take them away or leave them in the ground to either run down or east into the river. It seems to me you pump as much as you possibly can. And, uh, that's the cheapest and, and most uh, sensible option from a health standpoint. Are you but, looking also to have the soil tested in that location? Because when I spoke to Entergy yesterday, they're testing in the wells, but and they're not seeing cobalt and cesium and strontium in the water. Right. Um, but they're not testing the soil. Would you advocate for that? We have to remember that tritium is water soluble and it moves like water. That the other uh, nuclear substances that leak there don't. They move very, very slowly. So one would not expect them under any circumstances to show up in groundwater wells yet. I think uh, you know, that we should learn from the other states. And the other states that have faced these challenges have pumped as much as they can possibly pump. It has not been unusual for uh, the operators of plants to uh, move to shut down pumping because it costs money. Uh, some states have gone to court uh, to insist that they continue to pump. I hope we don't have to take that route. I'd love to be able to work together with energy to keep the pumps back up, to keep the pumps on. It's a cheap option to pump compared to the challenges of a aquifer that has nuclear waste in it and clean up later on. Um, I, there's a lot of administrative stuff that goes along with being tax commissioner too. Are you saying that you 